Start the camera. All right. We're turning your notebooks to the energizing cycle of <coughs> huddling. And it's going to be just the key word there is chairs, where the key word for the wife's acronym was the word couple. Can somebody give me what the, the letter C in couple stood for last night? What did C stand for? Cuddle. Cuddle. Okay. More than the same, right? Okay. Closest. Can somebody tell me something that a husband can do to make his wife feel close to him and make them feel close to one another? Understand. Huh? Understand. Well, that's going to be, yeah, yes, that's also going to be in the acronym. Okay. What else? Hold hands. Hold hands. All right. Amen. Hugs. With each one of these, what I recommend in the back of your book, there are two pages, I believe there is, for notes. When you look at the acronyms, write down the different letters, what they stand for, and then put in there some things that you will personally do to apply those to your marriage. And so if we look at closeness, what are some things that a husband you can do to foster that closeness within your relationship? And this is this is where all this has got to get very personalized because we, we have very broad strokes that are, uh, I think, applicable to, to every woman and to every man. But there's also going to be some things that are going to be differences w between the different marriages and the different people. And so closeness. What does your wife need to make, make her feel y'all are close? And then we had O. What is O for? Openness. openness. And so how can, you, how can you show openness? How can your wife feel openness in the relationship? Um, you, one thing that these, these couple, couple retreats do is it forces us to have time with each other. Amen. You're going to get home, um, uh, you, your phone's probably like mine, it's, it's blowing off the hook. Everybody and their mama wants to get in touch with you. That's right. Uh, got things going on, got things need to be handled. And you're going to be, you're going to be going back to the same old grind. And what a couple's retreat does is it gives you a chance, an excuse, not to think about anybody but your mate. And so you've got to establish a daily time that you have a couple's retreat. You have a weekly time that you have a couple's retreat. If you do not make your marriage a priority, if I don't make my marriage a priority, there are so many things that are going on that you can, you can get to the end of a day, a week, a month, and a year and not have spent the time that you need to spend right. in your marriage relationship. So you need, to, you need to set aside time to have couple's retreats at home with you and your wife. So closeness and openness. You, we've talked about understanding. What was the P for? Peacemaker. Peacemaking. And so how can, how can you be a peacemaker in the home? L was for what? Loyalty. You can look at your notes. This is, you're not gonna get, we're not going to draw a circle, put your notes Loyalty. in the top for it. <coughs> Peacemaking loyalty. Loyalty. And then the E was? Esteem. Esteem. And so, men, what I want you to do on the notes section is write down those different letters. Write, write with the letters, the word that goes with that letter. And then I want you to individualize how you are going to work on closeness with your wife. How you're going to work on openness with your wife. How you're going to work on understanding and peacemaking and loyalty and esteem. How, you're going to, how you men personally are going to work on those things with your relationship with your wife. And you need to give it some attention and you need to give it some thought. Okay, now we're going to jump into chairs, and that's for the men. Let's talk about the men. Let's talk about the respect. And ladies, if I could, if, if, when you finish writing, if you would look at me, make sure we're all on the same page here. <clears throat> None of this is to minimize you. I think if, as you've heard the teaching, and if you know me, um, there's great honor and value and esteem uh, of, of the place that God has for a dear woman. Um, that's biblical. But the Christianity does not devalue a woman. It elevates her. And so I want you to understand as we go through this, it's not a matter that this devalues you, but God in His wisdom, He's the one that set up everything. He, he's the one that we look to. We say we're followers of the Word of God, and He's given authority structure within the home. Why is it, and I want you just to think with me, why is it that authority structure, now this is a very broad stroke, okay? Why is it authority structure with ladies is accepted in every place but one? Authority structure is accepted at work. Authority structure is accepted in society. Authority structure is accepted in politics. Authority structure is accepted at the restaurant you go to. Authority structure is accepted everywhere but one. And that's when you go home. Why is there such a, 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 a tendency, a desire for, I'm not going to have my husband tell me what to do. 
I'm not going to be subservient to him. I'm not going to be his doormat. And so all of a sudden, all these negative things. And if you work with a group of women, it is like working with piranhas. And they are very, very negative. They change your spirit. How many of you women work with a group of women? I mean, am I lying or no? I mean, it's, it's true. It's piranha time, boy. They, God bless your hearts. But if you're not careful... All that negative stuff that is going on in the workplace and their relationships and the way they talk about their husband, the way they treat their husband, if you're not careful, that all that stuff comes back home with you. And so we're going to look at some things of biblically, what would be some things that we want to respect and honor our husbands that God has given us? What are some things that we can focus on? And so C, ready? Focus on the word conquest. Conquest. And that's appreciating his desire to work and achieve. Broad strokes with the average man. He wants to be successful. Uh, he wants to uh, conquer and have esteem in his job. The reason so many men work so hard at their job is that's where they get a lot of their identity from. God gave Adam a job and a responsibility in the Garden of Eden. But God knew that Adam could not accomplish what he wanted to accomplish by himself. And he said, it's not good that man should be alone. So I'm going to make a help meet for him. Genesis 2.18. Lord God said, it's not good that man should be alone. I'll make a help meet. A suitable companion for him to get the job accomplished. In 1 Corinthians 11 and 9, neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. That's not to be chauvinistic. It's not to be belittling or demeaning. There's a purpose of why God has placed people into our lives. And you are so special that God knew that the man needed you and that he was not able to accomplish what he needed to without you. Conquest signified men's desire to do well in their work. They wanted to go out and conquer the world. Adam had his job. He needed Eve to fulfill it. Um, if you want to see a man that is successful, if you want to see a man that has peace in his life, that works hard, that provides hard, that you would look at and say, that man's got it to hell. That's, that, that right there is a great man. What you're going to find behind that man is a greater woman. Amen. I've always said this, behind every great man of God, there's a greater woman of God. Because he cannot accomplish what he does without what God gave him and the Amen. importance of a wife. So when you look at your man, does your man get you applauding for him? Does your man get you cheering for him? Does your man hear your accolades? Does your man hear your respect to the words that you say to him and to others? Do men hear that? Do they see that? Years ago, I never asked for it. I never, no, never told her to do it. I, I, I'm not on Facebook. I just really can't stand it, to be honest with you. Um, but uh, my wife would write when we would go, go somewhere and we're preaching and all. She started using this expression that I'm going I'm I'm to go hear my favorite preacher. I'm going to hear my favorite preacher. I'm going to hear my favorite preacher. I'm going to hear my favorite preacher. If I can't be her favorite preacher, we're in trouble because she hears me all the time. <laughs> but whether I'm her favorite or not, just that going out there. Do you know how many people have come up to me? And when she could not travel, she's like, boy, I'm sorry I could hear my favorite preacher tonight. Do you know how many people are, they're so stuck on social media and all? Do you know how many people, I walked into the church and they said, well, I guess we finally get to meet the favorite preacher. Now, that's not going to do anything for you. It does the world for me. And what your man needs is not him being compared to somebody else that's better than him. He's your favorite. I had a lady come up to me one day and says, oh, my favorite preacher's here. And I said, oh, no, he's not. <laughs> I was like, I'm the favorite preacher to one woman. That's, that, that's my wife. And the problem in your life and in your marriage is her husband was standing right next to her, and he is a preacher as well. How do you think that made that man feel? And so I turned the conversation to the point place that by the end of it, she was saying that he was her favorite preacher, and she didn't even realize what we're doing. I'm going to understand this. Your husband needs need you... <laughs> The respect and the honor that uh, whatever he's doing, it is the greatest thing in the world. doesn't matter what occupation he has. It doesn't matter what job he has. When it comes to him seeing your perception, he's the greatest in the world. You are his cheerleader. You are his strength. You say, well, he should just do it anyway. It, sure we should. But boy, isn't it, isn't it awful nice to have somebody cheering for you? Have you ever thought about the, these guys? They get out there on the, on the ball field. And we fill up not only a sideline with cheerleaders, mm -hmm. but we fill, we fill up 100,000 seat stadiums with right. people to cheer on their teams. You've got a team. Put your last name there. It's team last name. Your husband is a player. And he's going on the field. You make him feel like he's the greatest in the world. 
whether it's, you know, I know, Brother Vinny, you, you help with the, the, the youth and all. Uh, Derek, you, you're working with the children and all. And I don't know what everybody does, so I don't want to call out favorites. But when it comes to ministry, when it comes to work, when it comes to your man, honor the conquest. Honor what he's doing. Because I'll give you this. You say, well, my husband's really not as motivated <coughs> as I'd like for him to be. Well, you get behind for him and start cheering for him, and you see him just go hog wild on you. The reason a lot of men aren't motivated is they have no motivation. They don't have a wife at home that encourages them. Uh, I know it's going to sound funny to you, but uh, when you send your man out of the house, it's sort of like a ball team. Kiss him, love him, baby, pat him on the bottom. Go get him, Tiger. <laughs> and you guys can laugh if you want to, but you got to put a little go get him in him. That man needs to leave the house going, man, I'm going to knock it out today. I'm, gonna knock, I'm taking off the lion's head. I'm going to rip a bear in half. I'm going to take care of some business. <laughs> I'm going to conquer this thing. I got mom at home and cheering for me, believing in me. Mama's loved me and stood, stood, stood by me and stuck with me. The conquest. See, I want my husband to be more of a conqueror than you be more of a cheerleader. And you'll be amazed at how that does something in the heart of your man. So the, the conquest right there. And a lot of good stuff there. Ways a husband will feel appreciated, uh, feel you appreciate his desire to work and achieve the green there on your, on your, on your sheets. You tell him verbally or in writing that you value his work e e efforts. You express your faith in him uh, related to his chosen field. You say, I, I don't know much about his chosen field. I don't mean it's smart looking, but I don't have a whole lot of time. If you don't know much about your husband's chosen field, I recommend you start learning. Uh, start, start reading. One thing about YouTube, one thing about the Internet, you can find all the world's filth in there if you want that. But there's so much stuff out there that uh, if you want to know about what your husband does, you can get that job for dummies and know it in five minutes. Learn about it. Take interest in what your husband does. You listen to his work closely as you expect him to listen to your accounts of what happens in the family. You see yourself as his helpmate and counterpart and talk with him about the, this whenever possible. You allow, look at this one now. You allow him to dream. You let him get a dream in his heart for his business, for his work, for what he's doing in his life, of how God can use him. Don't steal his dream. Don't, when he tells you something that is from Neptune, don't look at him and say, you're crazy. Look at him and say, I believe you can do that. I don't have all the answers on it, but baby, if, baby, I tell you this, if anybody could do that, you could do that. And then if you don't need to do that, you pray God stop it. <laughs> you don't dishonor or subtly criticize his work in the field to get him to show more love in the family. So conquer, the conquest, H, write this word down, hierarchy. H-I-E-R-A-R-C-H-Y, hierarchy. Appreciate his desire to protect and provide. Ephesians 5, 23 and 24, for the husband is the head of the wife. Now, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. And therefore, the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands and everything. and everything. The hierarchy. You go to Corinthians, and it talks about the head of Christ is God, the head of man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man. It doesn't mean that because the head of Christ is God, that Christ is any devalued, that he's devalued, that his worth is limited at all. It's a hierarchy structure that God has established within the family. Biblical hierarchy is not to be sexist, it's not to be condemning. It's, we only want to reflect in our homes what Scripture is teaching. Biblical hierarchy or headship is a position of sacrifice and service for your man. The higher you go up, the more responsibilities that you have, the less freedoms you have. And men say, well, I want to, I want to be the, the leader of my home. That means you're going to sacrifice more than anybody else. That means that you're, you're looking out for the good of mama and the kid more than yourself. It means that you're the servant of servants. You're the example of examples. Somebody looked and said, well, I, I, would, I, I like to pastor Newton Baptist Church. And I went, and, and again, I, sometimes my mouth, I, I need grace on it. And I really need duct tape, to be honest with you. Um, I like, then you need to learn how to be a servant. And I said, pastoring and leading a people and leading a group and God growing that group is not about power. It's not about the level of wh who you are. I said, it's not where you sit. I was like, I noticed during the luncheon that I was the one that was rolling the trash can around while you were sitting there. I said, if you want to be the pastor one day, what I highly recommend is you find a trash can. In my position, great authority, a lot of authority. It's gotten to a point in place that I've been there long enough now that I've learned, I've earned, and have the love of the people. I must now be very careful of saying if I want something, I've got to be very careful of saying I wish something would happen. I have to be very careful of that. 
But that does not give me the right to lord over God's flock. I am to lead God's flock with a servant's spirit. And so, man, when I look at you and I say, now, you, you're the head of your home. Biblically, you men are the head of your home. You need to grab a trash can. You need to be a servant. Amen. You need to be thoughtful. You need to be considerate. Now, Mama, you need to look at him and, and honor the position of hierarchy that God has established, that place of, of responsibility that he has within the home. You need to realize this. There, there are times that men will buckle underneath this responsibility because it's a great weight to be responsible for everything. And what some men need is instead of you kicking them when they buckle, they need you building them up so they can stand. Yeah. It's not a time when your husband has a moment of good night, fatigue, buckles. It's not a time to start kicking and saying, I knew you weren't the kind of man that could leave this family. I'm just if you can't do it, I guess I will. That is not a time for that. It's a time to have to build up your man, strengthen your man, lift up your man, honor the hierarchy that God has placed in there. Men, we need to be servants. We need to be submitting ourselves one to another in the fear of the Lord. The, the quote there in green is the problem with many people that many people, while well, women have today, including Christian wives, is they want to be treated like a princess, but deep down they resist treating their husbands <coughs> like the king. And so, again, this is not meant to be chauvinistic. It's not meant to be sexist at all. But follow the biblical hierarchy for a man to walk into a home and that man to be honored. There's something to that. Ladies had gotten together for a Christmas party down in South Georgia. And one of the ladies had deep respect and honor for her husband. Her husband got up extremely early in the mornings and went to work and he worked very hard. He, he was an extremely hard-working man. Uh, it was a physical job that he did. It was a very demanding job that he did. He was, he was, one of the, he was a man's man in the work field that he went to. And the wife was talking about how that when he, she gets up with him very early in the morning, takes his clothes, puts them in the dryer, fluffs them up, warms them up so that when her husband puts the clothes on, they're warm for him before he goes out into the truck, the cold. It was wintertime, it was Christmas, before he goes out to the truck to start his very long day. I heard that and I'm like, wow, that, wow, is that not just, what, what a sweet, sweet touch. You know, what, you know what about three or four of the other ladies did to that lady? It turned into a piranha pool. Mm -hmm. And they made fun of her, <clears throat> laughed at her, ridiculed her, put her down. And I started looking at, at her marriage and I started looking at the other marriages. Of all the marriages of the four women, she, hers was the only one that had any type, any semblance of respect within that home. Fluff his clothes. What, I, I don't know what it is. Show him respect. Honor his word encourage him, brag on him. And I'm telling you ladies this, if, you, if you'll treat your man like that and you put some armor on him and you, you go ahead and put the sword in his hand and you put some giddy up in his soul, there's nothing that man's not going to be able to accomplish. Yeah, you, you, you put some go get him within him. You put some fire in him. And again, you guys think it's funny, but when you kiss him on the cheek, kiss him on the mouth, look him in the eye, say, baby, I believe in him, pat him on the bottom and send him out. Glory to God. He'll come back home a different man. You ladies do not realize the power you have to absolutely build up or destroy your husband. Build him up. Give him, give him, give him some, some respect. Give him the, you're the leader of our home. Now, as the leader of our home, which direction we want to go on this? He's going to say, well, I'm praying about this. Honey, what do you think we need to do with this? Because it's amazing with a man. If you show him honor, if you show him respect, if you show him you're working together, I, I'm telling you, broad stroke, but a man's going to look back and go, well, baby, I mean, I, I got a thought on this, but what do you think? And all of a sudden, everything that you've been looking for, ladies, all, all the, the, the closeness and the understanding and the openness and him sharing and him feeling, all, all the things that you're looking for, when you treat him with respect and you treat him with honor and you honor the, the, the hierarchy that God has put within there and he's not having a fight with you all the time about who does it, what, who says what, who is what Amen. within our family, you'll see him reciprocating without him even knowing it you'll see him reciprocating the things that you're longing for within your relationship. A, I gotta hurry, A, authority, authority. Appreciate his desire to serve and to lead. Again, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands. You know what, it, how do you think it makes a man feel when you are honoring all the different authorities in your life but him? How do you think that makes him feel? Well, my husband's not really much of a man. Have you ever treated him like a man? 
You guys that, are, that have raised, raised, raised kids, we got kids living, uh, anyway. <laughs> I'm just challenged with our society that we have so many kids that are 45 years old. At what point in time are they not a kid no more? And so if you're going to treat a kid, if you're going to treat a, a, a young man like a kid, you can't, you can't be surprised when he's 45, 55 years old and he's still acting like a kid. If you want them to act like a man, you know how you treat them? You treat them like a man. Well, I don't, I don't think they should do this, and I don't think they should play with that, and I don't think they should, and, and I, don't, I don't know if they can do this. And I, I glory to God. We throw them in the military at 18 years of age and put them in charge of millions of dollars worth of equipment and put a gun in their hand. But your kid can't take out the trash? <coughs> they can't be responsible for a chore? Is, is anybody with me? Amen. So what I'm saying is we, we understand this principle with children that if you treat them, treat them like a child, no matter how old they get, they're going to act like a child. Well, if you treat your man like a boy, stop whining and complaining that he acts like a boy. That's right. Put some steel in your man. Put some belief in your man. Put some faith in your man. May scare you to death. Trust God, but put some authority in your man. And you start treating your man like a man. You know, he's gonna, you know how he's going to start acting? He's going to start acting like a man. I don't know if that makes any sense to you. First Timothy 2 Timothy 12. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over a man, but to be in silence. And that's not a ridicule, and that a, wife, that a woman does not have a ministry in the church. That's not what it's saying at all. But the authority structure that God has given, that a man would have some authority. And I mean, if you take this the wrong way and say, now woman, you need to shut up, I'm the authority in this home. I would just go ahead and tell you right off the bat, that's not the way to handle that. Mm -hmm. Because all of a sudden, you just, you just <laughs> volunteered and put a quarter into the crazy cycle machine. Because it's going to be on then. And don't you blame it on me. That's all, that's all for you. Amen. And so authority. Authority gives him the ability to carry out the responsibilities that God has placed on him. All authority has been given to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is one of authority. And how has Jesus Christ treated you? Uh, women say, I'm afraid to give him authority. Well, now Jesus Christ has all authority. How has he treated you? If your husband has authority, I mean, really, he, he's a follower of Jesus Christ. <coughs> Maybe what your husband needs is just for you to believe in him and trust him and take that step of letting him make decisions. Well, my husband don't know how to make decisions. It's because you never let him. And every one that he makes, you criticize it, put it down, and change it. Ladies have a mothering tendency. And as long as you keep your man in diapers, then don't be surprised when he poops on you all the time. Get him out of the diapers. Mm -hmm. Let him start. Let, let him start walking around. Um, anyway, there's a lot I can say right there, but I'm just telling you, if you want a man at home, then treat him like one. If you want to be a mothering, <laughs> tendency woman, keep stuffing the pacifier in his mouth, diaper around his waist, baby powder him, not trusting him. Yeah. Not believing in him. Oh, honey, I, I'll take care of that. You take care of yourself. Go, you go ahead, sit in that little kind of watch your little guy. I'll take care of you all. Go, you want a bottle? <laughs> you, it is, I'm, I'm trying to I mean, Are y'all with me? Yeah. And so treat him like a man. Let him act like a man. Anyway, authority. It's impossible for him to be the head that God has called him to be without authority. In the context of love and respect, nearly every conflict can be resolved to the agreement of everyone involved when we have the right hierarchy. When there is a rare occasion where compromise is impossible, then his authority ought to be respected. I mean, you ought to actually ask your wives what they think. You need to ask your wives how they feel about stuff. You, and there's not a decision that we make that I don't ask Stacy. I, I want you to look at me and understand this principle. Some of y'all don't get this principle. You don't have a good marriage when it comes to this thing. Because some of the ladies are afraid to let them make decisions and all. But there's not a decision. You know, 99% of my messages before anybody ever hears me preach my messages. You know, every one of them she reads first and, and I ask her what she thinks about it. Every one of them. Saturday nights, one of the things that we do is she sits there, goes through my computer, streaming through it, reading the messages for, for the next day. I said, well, I said is this going to connect? I said, does this make sense? What do you think about this? You did, did, you, ladies, you're, you're so afraid. 
But if you show them respect and give them authority then, and what I'm telling you is this, she shows great respect, authority in our home. I, I, am, a, I am a blessed man. But what the ladies don't realize is, whatever she wants, she don't have to tell me what she's going to buy. I'm not loaded. But I'll tell you this, if i got to put it on credit to get another job, if she wants it, she can have it. Why? She shows such respect and such honor. She's been such a, a cheerleader. And I'm telling you, she has stuck by me through some challenging, challenging times. And what it does in my life, her great respect, it, it pours out of my life back to her in great amounts of love. If she goes by something and says, man, that sure would be nice to have that. It's going to be ordered somehow, some way. And if I can borrow one of y'all's credit cards, you can pay for it. <laughs> Are y'all with me? But see, some of the things that I'm just telling you, you're looking for them in your marriage. And if you, just, if you would just show the respect, if, if you would just show the respect, you say, well, he should start it with love. And I would look at the men and say, you need to start it with love. But I'm talking to ladies now. So I look at you and I say, dear lady, start it. Start showing respect. Stop laughing about it, making jokes when you're disrespectful, thinking it's okay. Because it's not okay. And it's not okay when it's done in public. And we can laugh about it. We can say all this kind of stuff about it. And we can brush it off. But if you look within your man's soul, it's, it, it, most men die by paper cut. It's not a bludgeoning, bludgeoning ja, uh, uh, javelin or dagger or sword. It's one paper cut after another paper cut after another paper cut after criticism and comment and action and facial expression and sigh. They're paper cut to death on the inside, one nick at a time. And after a while, after enough of those paper cuts, your husband has bled out. And the life's gone, and the leadership's gone, and the fire's gone, and the oom's gone, all of it's gone. And what you need to decide in your life is, you know what? I'm fixing to put steel back in my husband's soul. I'm going to put a belief in him that no matter what he wants to do, I'm going to stick by him. I'm going to believe in Him. I'm going to love Him. And when it scares me to death, I'm going to allow that to be an indicator to push me closer to God Amen. than I've ever been before. Authority. Um, we got to, it's, it's, it's 15 after. We'll finish this up on the last section, okay? Father, we love You. We pray, God, that You would help us. God, we need so much help. The devil fights so strongly against our homes, these dear ladies. They are bombarded day after day after day with unbiblical mindsets about a man. And I pray that your word would, Lord, straighten our path. And Lord, it would guide our hearts. And Father, I pray for such sweetness within these families, within their marriages. I pray, Father, that these men, because of the help meet that you've given them, that these men would do great exploits for our God. I pray that we'd hear testimony a year from now of the great things these men stepped out and did. Because they had a wife that believed, honey, you can do this. Lord, help this be a reality. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.